Um, so I'm Dini. I am um, the Wikimedia European chapters, one of the two representatives in Brussels, where we follow up on everything that the EU does in order to um, regulate the internet and um, and uh, yeah, well, Wikipedia essentially. Uh, and you might know me from previous Wikimanias where we talked about how the EU is about to pass a copyright reform um, and that there will be a copyright directive that is uh, going to change what we are able to show on Wikipedia and what uh, we might have to delete of our projects. Um, this was a few years ago by now. Um, so uh, two years ago, the EU's copyright directive was passed. Uh, but as this Forbes article um, that I took a screenshot of here um, correctly points out, uh, it does not mean that this, uh, these new copyright rules that the EU adopted are, are actual law yet, because the way EU legislation works, any directive first needs to be transposed into national law in the EU member states and a few others that have uh, that sort of contractual relationship uh, with the EU. Um, so it's um, a, a really vast topic how to transpose this in, in all the countries because we decided, um, well, if, if we're going to do, um, you know, if, if we spent like five, six years on trying to influence um, how the EU directive looks, we can't just stop there. We need to make sure um, it ends up in a good uh, form and in a good format in, in most of these countries. Um, so this is what we tried to do. Uh, we are more than two years down the line. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, only four countries have fully implemented, so have fully transposed the EU directive. And everywhere else, so all the other countries from France and Italy to Spain and Sweden, it's still an ongoing process, which means we are trying to figure out what's going on where and to give our arguments, to provide input and to try to make sure that the things we really care about are uh, transposed into each of these countries' national laws in, in a way that we essentially can share more knowledge, not less knowledge. So um, the directive is quite a big um, chunk uh, of uh, legislation. It has many topics that we care about, uh, from text and data mining to uh, cross-border teaching activities uh, to use of out-of-commerce works. But for uh, the sake of this presentation, uh, I need to focus a little bit. Um, so I will focus on um, two articles that are, well, uh, most directly tied to our work. And I'll also focus on, on the process of how we set up this uh, multi-year continental wide uh, network that we work with. Uh, and uh, also um, I will uh, give you a quick uh, debrief of how uh, the two articles that we most care about were, were transposed in the four countries that are already done with the transposition. So the one article um, that was um, basically ours and Europeana's uh, doing and, and ask is basically perhaps um, the only article in the entire EU copyright uh, reform from 2019 that is uh, unequivocally good. It's a public domain safeguard. It essentially says that if a work is in the public domain, so the copyright has expired, and you make an exact copy of it, uh, then this copy, digital or non, is also public domain and you can use it. Um, we asked for this um, like because we just believe that that needs to happen, but also more concretely because a German courts had ruled that this centuries-old portrait by Richard Wagner, uh, while being in the public domain, digital copy thereof uh, still has some uh, layers of protection on top of it, so we couldn't use it. So this has now been successfully overturned, which is one of our victories uh, that we also need to celebrate. Uh, the other thing I will um, look in for the sake of this presentation, look at for the sake of this presentation, uh, is uh, Article, 70s, uh, Article 17, 
uh, it was um, called upload filter or value gap, depending of which side of the of the ideological debate you were on. It basically um, made uh, platforms that let users um, upload uh, content liable for whatever, more liable for whatever their users users upload. And the article in the end, the way it was written, because of course we and others complained a lot, we even blacked out Wikipedia in some European countries, um, tries to strike a balance between the interests of a rights holder whose material might be wrongfully used, uh, but also the rights of users uh, who do have under exceptions and limitations in copyright law, the right to take a certain image and maybe use it to poke fun at somebody or something. Um, so, you know, this balance, uh, how it, it gets transposed into national laws is actually quite important uh, to how the internet will work in the future. Um, so how do you try to transpose an EU directive in basically close to 30 countries? Uh, well, the first thing you need to do is you get yourself uh, a lot of good partners together. Um, so Wikimedia Deutschland is uh, the largest chapter uh, of the Wikimedia Foundation and um, it is also the one that hosts uh, Wikimedia Brussels or so Brussels activities are hosted by uh, Wikimedia Deutschland. It is also probably the only one that uh, was able to deliver the infrastructure to do this work over several years. Um, what it did is, is basically Wikimedia Deutschland make sure that I um, basically had as much time as I needed to work on this project and coordinate it over basically uh, two years and more. Uh, we came together with Comunia. Comunia, Comunia is the European level um, association um, that unites uh, Wikimedia, Creative Commons, the Open Knowledge Foundation and a few other NGOs. Uh, it basically is the voice for public domain and user rights uh, in Europe. Uh, Comunia took a lead on, on the legislative part of it. So analyzing the directive, creating model language, we'll get to that later. Uh, and Centrum Cyfrowe, which is a Polish think tank, they, um, they uh, took uh, the lead on the educational exception, which I won't go into for the sake of this presentation, but it is also something important to make sure that teaching activities cross-border are illegal under the EU's new, new rules. So this is the part that Centrum Cifrova dedicated itself to. Um, all this was um, made uh, possible uh, by also a uh, 300,000 euro approximately grant by the Open Society Foundations, which went to Wikimedia Deutschland. Wikimedia Deutschland pitched in uh, several, well, basically at least one FTE and the, the accounting and bureaucracy work. Uh, and um, this is how we got here. Um, so the first thing we did, um, and not me, my colleague who can't be with us today, uh, Teresa Nobre, uh, we had the directive was passed in April 2019. And uh, we basically, Comunia did this under the auspices of Teresa Nobre. Uh, she uh, got a lot of experts together who looked into each article that is of importance to us, analyzed it, pinpointed which parts of the directive a EU member state has to implement, which parts are optional, and where there is room for improvements in national laws. And not only this, um, uh, the implementation guidelines also provide uh, arguments, jurisprudence, uh, information about uh, past court cases, that is, uh, and uh, model language. And we were actually able uh, to set up these implementation guidelines. It's basically a couple of dozen pages per article that we care about. Uh, so it's a lot of work. Uh, by uh, October uh, 2019, uh, where we came together for a uh, what we called a transposition bootcamp. So we tried to get uh, community members and interested activists and maybe like-minded organizations from uh, each one of these countries that have to transpose the EU copyright directive. We got them together in Warsaw to present these guidelines to them and to talk them through the details. And this is actually very quick, October 2019, the deadline for national states to implement the directive was um, 7th of June 2021. 
Um, so we had model language on how to best implement the directive back in October 2019 that we shared with uh, like-minded organizations and activists in, in almost all member states and, um, and other countries, uh, which, is, which means that, I, and I know this for a fact, in quite a few countries, our, our um, friends, our partners had model language well before even the national government had even started thinking about such uh, such uh, things. Um, now we, of course, don't have Wikimedia chapters or active groups that work on on legislation in all these countries. So basically, the people you see here and the people you don't see here uh, are a come to come from four different networks. So the Wikimedia chapters and user groups, uh, Creative Common Commoners. Uh, we have uh, a lot of NGOs from the EDRI network. This is European Digital Rights. So they have some NGOs that care about digital rights and they consider user rights in copyright a digital right. Uh, and also some library associations. Um, covering all these countries, well, of course, it's, it's not easy to do. Um, and, you know, it's not done with uh, getting people together for a couple of days in Warsaw and telling them, you know, what, what they need to look into and not. Uh, so uh, what we continue doing for the, for the four years, for the, for, the, for the two years to come, um, is uh, we set up a re-granting scheme. So a large part of the money that we received from the USF um, actually went into supporting activities and the work of national communities and partners. And many grants, um, just to give you a little bit of an idea, it's um, communities and activists from somewhat over 20 countries, so I think it's 20 to 23 countries, got grants uh, in the range of two to 6,000 euros. We set up something that we call the copyright transposition hotline, which is, of course, not a hotline, but basically, uh, well, a, a signal signal channel and an email and, you know, such online uh, ways of getting in touch where basically Teresa Nobre and myself um, have been answering questions. And these were all kinds of, of it's, it's basically a helpline. Uh, so it could be something like, hey, my national government has a public consultation going on the transposition. I don't know what to answer. So we help this community and in this country write, the, uh, write this. Or, hey, you know, we're thinking of teaming up with another organization and writing a position paper. So we help on this. Or, you know, if there is an event that needed to be done. Uh, we also try to help, I mean, both with, uh, with the legal legislative part of things, but also with the organizational and tactical part. Uh, of, of the work. Um, so we try to regularly check in with the communities because, of course, it's, it's, it's basically close to 30 countries uh, and not every country works at the same pace. And then there was also, of course, the pandemic. Uh, so while the, the Dutch and the Dutch government in the Netherlands, they very knew, very well knew from the beginning what they will do, when they will do. In quite a few countries, there was nothing happening for a year and a half. And then suddenly they got active. Uh, and of course, if you're a volunteer who wanted to work on this a year and a half ago, and then so many things happened, maybe you forgot about it, or maybe you don't have the time to check or to think about it all the time. So we try to regularly talk to people and see, hey, how are you doing? Did anything new happen in your country? Was there maybe uh, a consultation by the government that we missed? Uh, let's see this together. Uh, and the other thing we try to do are events. Now, this was, of course, um, cut short by the pandemic. But uh, we uh, nevertheless managed to do a few events at the very beginning of it. Uh, like, for instance, we went to Cyprus, uh, where our partner in Cyprus, the UNESCO Chair for Digital Cultural Heritage, organized a great uh, real-life event with parliamentarians and with government officials, where we basically uh, had also the opportunity to present our transposition guidelines and asks to them. Um, so this is uh, what's been happening. It, the work was supposed to be done on the 7th of June this year, but of course, due to the pandemic and several, on, well, and an ongoing court case in the Court of Justice, uh, the work will actually continue in most countries for at least, um, well, until at least the end of this year. Um, so now you may ask, did we really manage to find people to work with us everywhere? Where we are actually astonished that we managed to find people in most places. 
Um, now, I, I assume a lot of people are watching this. Um, three places where we managed to be active and we managed to produce some input, but where we are still lacking community members that reliably can um, you know, work with us over the years and really care about this topic are Croatia, Lithuania, and Latvia. Uh, in Croatia, we had some input both in the parliamentary committee stage and in the government um, and in the uh, government consultation. Uh, but the person who does this does not live in Croatia any longer, and uh, he also doesn't have much time, so we are really lacking people there. In Lithuania and Latvia, we are working through the library associations. The libraries are great friends of ours, uh, but still, you know, of course, the libraries have their uh, own very particular interests, so they can't always uh, stand up and say, hey, we also care about uh, memes or, you know, about what goes on Wikipedia or not. Um, so it, 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 if you know somebody who is interested in long time working on, on copyright issues in these countries, please get in touch. I'll, I'll share my contacts later. Um, so maybe to look uh, very quickly at the, at the four countries that already transposed uh, what, we, uh, what we care about. So the public domain safeguard, uh, what happened there is uh, Germany and Malta uh, picked it up and transposed it from the directive into national law. And it's already valid national law. So congratulations in these two countries we have on the books, not only the public domain as a term, which didn't exist before, but also something that says that um, it is safeguarded. So basically when you digitize public domain works, they continue to be in the public domain. Uh, the Netherlands and Hungary, um, they skipped this. They didn't transpose this particular article, or, although they have to, according to the directive. Um, the argument of the government, uh, and we have this in written at least, uh, was that uh, this public domain safeguard is already the case in their national law systems, and they've never had an issue with somebody claiming the opposite. This is what they say at least. Um, so uh, they don't need it. Um, now, well, we'll see in the follow-up to this, we might need to check um, this, these statements in courts, but, you know, anyways, it's good, um, it's good uh, to have them at least uh, in writing that uh, they think it's, it's already the case. Uh, the user rights in Article 17, so where I told you it's like um, when a rights holder claims something is illegal and when a user claims something is covered under a copyright exception, uh, who, do, who does a platform need to listen to? Like the details here are very important. Um, so what happened here is um, Germany, uh, in our account, did a very good job in transposing it. Uh, it basically introduced ex ante user rights safeguards against blocking uh, of, of content, uh, which means that if a user uploads something and then a rights holder says, hey, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, illegal and it needs to go, but the user uploaded this and claimed un it's under an exception, then uh, the, uh, it should be presumed that the use is, uh, is authorized and the platform should not delete the content until it's proven that it's not, So, which is, which is quite a good thing. Um, uh, users, user organizations are also awarded a collective redress option for injunctive relief against platforms that repeatedly block legal uploads, which is also something we welcome and we asked for. Um, in Hungary, the Hungarian implementation of Article 17 um, is largely limited to restating what the directive says, but um, it does uh, include a relatively strong collective redress mechanisms, which means that uh, users can form groups or uh, organizations and they can uh, collectively uh, ask for their rights if their content gets blocked and, you know, to basically change also the law, which is, uh, which is still good. Um, we don't know what to really say about the Netherlands and Malta because they didn't really transpose it into national law. They basically just copied whatever the directive says one to one into their, into their books. Uh, which is still not the worst because the Article 17 in its final version is already trying to make some balances between user rights and rights holders' rights. Uh, but we have to see how this plays out. And now if you're thinking, why am I not seeing any frowning smiley here? Uh, well, the frowning smiley will come uh, at the latest when France and Italy are done with their transposition of Article 17, which uh, they're not done yet. 
Um, now, if you want to follow this process in, in a lot more detail, which of course we don't have the time for here, uh, you can go to tracker.comuniassociation.org. This is where we try really in detail to keep information about everything that's going on uh, with the national copyright reforms in each country. Um, it, it can be very technical, um, and this is not uh, for everybody. Uh, so most people just want to quickly know, so what's going on, where are they yet, and was it good or bad what they did? Uh, and for this, and also to have a little bit of fun, because after two, uh, two years and a half, you, you get tired of, uh, you know, uh, articles and paragraphs and, um, you know, <laughs> recitals. Uh, so we built also the Eurovision.comuniassociation.org page uh, where we decided, hey, let's play Eurovision Song Contest, but with copyright reforms in each EU country. And uh, once they're done, uh, we assign points to them, both for process, was it an open, democratic, inclusive and transparent process? Uh, and in the end, uh, did they implement uh, public domain rights and user right? And uh, did they make education easier? Uh, education uh, online easier. Um, so this is what we look at. Uh, you can see currently Germany has uh, 10 points and it's leading. Uh, Hungary also didn't do a bad job. Um, port, like everybody else apart from Malta didn't move at all. So we'll see at the end uh, how things end up. Make sure to visit this page every once in a while. And also like if you're live on it and you click on one of these countries, you also get um, in a few lines, really the most important things in the transposition for each country that are important and relevant to us. So if you want like a quick overview and also a fun overview, eurovision.communiassociation.org. Now, uh, from here on, we of course have uh, probably another year until all these countries um, end up transposing it. We'll continue working on it. Um, and uh, we are um, for to make sure this happens and to make sure that our help uh, continues remaining available. We are already working with the partners of extending the project, maybe to get some follow up funding. Uh, and after that, um, so in, in our mind, the way European legislation works is you have the EU level legislation, so a directive, then you have the transposition. And then you have a, a play a time where this lives on in practice and where there is jurisprudence and litigation and you already set the agenda for the next uh, copyright reform. Um, so as we wrap up the current uh, national implementations, we are also looking into preparing legislation and agenda setting for the future, uh, where we hope that uh, Wikimedia and Comunia are already uh, keen on working on this. We are now negotiating with the other partners whether they want to continue. And hey, if you want to be a part of this in the future, just um, drop me a line or, or write to me on Twitter. Uh, I'm happy to talk and happy to just exchange a few ideas. Um, so let me close this now. And um, with this, I'm done. And... Hmm. And I guess I can check that. Uh, was it the etherpad that I need to check? Yeah, just another uh, maybe something to note. Um, me and Teresa were supposed to do this together, so this could not have happened without Teresa. Teresa is probably. Uh, she is um, a Comunia member, but also a, a expert from Creative Commons from Portugal. And uh, she's currently that person who is most knowledgeable about the EU copyright rules in all member states. Um, so regardless whether you ask her about uh, copyright, uh, a copyright exception on education in Lithuania, or how the EU legislation has changed something in the Cyprus law, she is on top of this um, and she is uh, probably the most valuable person we have in our communities working on that. Um, she is of course currently on a well-deserved holiday on a Portuguese island with very bad internet um, and she was supposed to travel to a place with better internet to do this presentation but then the uh, it got rescheduled so I told her hey you've been working on this for two and a half years just <laughs> enjoy yourself. Thank you.
feel so alone here. Look at this. And yeah, for some reason, the Etherpad is not opening for a few minutes. So I don't know whether something's going on there that I could answer or not. Nope, still not opening. Well, anyhow, um, I guess, thank you. And yeah, if, if you need anything from me, dme at wikimedia.be for Belgium. Oh, that's cool. Etherpad's empty as well. So, I don't know even whether somebody's looking at it or listening. Maybe I'm alone in a box talking to myself in my living room. 